I just want to do a brief clip on um, pedestrian crossings and in particular these zebra crossings. Um, and I think the first thing to say about these zebra crossings is that, you know, the council don't put these up for no reason whatsoever. I mean, here we go, look, within five seconds of putting this, uh, starting the, the clip, somebody's used it. You know, they tend to be in residential areas or near shops or, uh, or places where the public use them often. And so they cost the council money to put them in place. And so they're there for a reason. You can pretty much bet, anticipate that there will be people using them. As we're driving along the road and I think before I go on any further I mean just having a think about what what the regulations say what the what the law says about zebra crossings is quite an important thing to do the highway code gives us some some indication about um, zebra crossings and it says you must give way when a pedestrian has moved on to a crossing not you can or should or you know you can think about it and depending on what day it is you absolutely must and at the bottom of the highway code section of it it quotes the law z treble p c r g d regulation 25 and what that's talking about if you if you if you go and have a look at that what it talks the thrust of it is is that you you have to Pedestrians have a word what they call precedence over vehicles on these zebra crossings, and that word precedence, if you if you look up what that actually means, it's all about um, the the actual definition is the right to proceed in order, rank or importance, priority. So it's what they're saying is is that the pedestrians have got more importance, more rights, more more. Um, priority over over vehicles and I think you've got to bear that in mind whenever you're approaching a zebra crossing pedestrians uh, will be expecting you to know that rightly so and so you know uh, they will be wanting to cross because they know that vehicles have to give way to them don't get me wrong here, I think, I think we've got to put everything in perspective. There's always two sides to every... Whenever an incident happens, there's always two sides to every story, and, and this is what the courts are for. The courts will listen to both sides of a story, because whilst pedestrians do have rights, um, you know, um, it's important. Circumstances change, don't they? And so... Um, sometimes there can be uh, other issues mitigating factors with regards to these things but as a general rule for the purposes of this video clip I think we should treat these zebra crossings as uh, because they are non-controlled because they don't have traffic lights which which hold us up on a red light they're non-controlled I think they're out of all the pedestrian crossings these are the potentially the most uh, hazardous because whilst Cyclists shouldn't ride over zebra crossings. They shouldn't. If you look at what the rules say about um, what, how pedestrians should use them, they should get off the bike and walk across. However, saying that, cyclists do. And so, looking at that example there, what we've got in front of us there, uh, you, we need to be always alive to the fact that a pedestrian walking towards a zebra crossing, you'll get a bit of notice, won't you? You'll get a bit of forewarning. There we go, classic example. Whereas a cyclist will approach that zebra crossing that much quicker, a bit quicker when, when, when we're coming towards the zebra crossing. And so, um, uh, and they won't be necessarily wanting to wait. That's the thing about the, all, all of this. So there's the white zigzags on the approach and on the exit uh, prevent vehicles from stopping on them. And the reason for doing that is because the council do that because they don't want vehicles blocking the vision, both for the pedestrians that are wanting to cross and also for, for other vehicles that are approaching the zebra crossing. We want that, that whole crossing area to be as clear as possible so that everybody can see, even people coming towards the zebra crossing. And I think, personally, I, I like to adopt the approach that if somebody if somebody starts walking towards the, the zebra crossing, that treat it like the sliding doors with, with Tesco's and Sainsbury's and everything. You know when you get within a few feet, six feet or so of the, of the doors, they slide open for you, don't they? They detect the movement towards it. I think we've got to treat these zebra crossings in the same sort of way. You hear a lot of people talk about, oh yeah, you only have to, only when their feet are on the black and white bit of the crossing do you have to give way. Well... I think that's a very dodgy strategy personally because 
what I, the, the, the way I like to deal with is that when somebody even walks towards the crossing and opens those glass doors, if you imagine those glass doors opening, that's good enough for me. And then we should be coming, checking the mirrors, coming off the gas and being prepared to, to come to a pause. Uh, that would be all I need, really. And then you, come to, you end up coming to a pause. They'll then cross and everything is, uh, everything is safe. The moment we start talking along the lines of, oh well, yeah, but um, I don't have to give way to them until they're actually physically on it. Well, it's, it's dodgy. It's well, well dodgy. It's a little bit like the same thing as when people go onto the crossing. Um, although, although technically speaking, they don't have to fully, completely cross the crossing, completely come off of the crossing before we proceed. In my the way the approach I like to do is let's let's wait for them to clear it because, you know, th theoretically they could turn round, couldn't they? It, it rarely happens, but if they could turn round whilst they're on the crossing and come back, double back on themselves, theoretically they, that could happen. But also, I just think you just need to sort of bear in mind what these crossings are for. They are for pedestrians to have a safe place in which to cross the road, and. The moment we start trying to get all clever about, oh well I can do this and I can do that and, and I think, you know, I don't have to wait for them to clear it and, and uh, I think it's just uh, uh, the mindset, the attitude towards um, vulnerable road users is slightly off, off kilter I would suggest. And so, like a lot of things really in when we're driving along, let's err on the side of of caution, you know, safety and and let's let's treat these zebra crossings with the way that they were intended they were introduced many many years ago now the uh, 19 i think it's 1950s a long long time ago um at the, slowly but surely i mean zebra there's lots of different types of pedestrian crossings and these zebra crossings are just one type but because they aren't controlled by the traffic lights they are the ones that are i believe the ones that can can be the most hazardous and, and we have to we have to appreciate that. So on the approach to these zebra crossings, the way to give yourself time to properly scan the crossing and look out for pedestrians and bikes approaching the crossing is to check your mirror, central mirror, see how close the vehicle is behind you, come off the gas and if you want to cover the brake, you can cover the brake, but at least come off the gas and don't keep driving at a hazard, a potential hazard. Uh, by doing that, you then give yourself time to scan, scan left, scan right, scan left, scan right, and you're looking for these, you're looking for these uh, pedestrians and also the cyclists as well. Um, once you've gone past the zebra crossing, check both mirrors and, and off you go again. But, uh, you know, I think if your vision goes down on the approach, your speed should certainly go down. You've got to be able to stop in a distance that seems to be clear. Absolutely key principle when it comes to zebra crossings.